Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Iker here, a congested Mr. Iker, but Mr. Iker nonetheless, to talk to you about 6.6a, exponential growth and decay. Show you a couple examples. So, exponential growth and decay. I'm talking about functions like this, y equals a b raised to the t, where a is the initial value when t is zero. t is time in years and b is the base. I'll just to remind you, we call it an initial value because if we had this equation, y equals a, b to the t, and we plug zero in here, b to the zero would be one. So this would simplify just to be y equals a, because this expression right here, b to the zero is one. So that's gone, that's just one. So the initial value is a when t is zero. That's gonna be really important. A lot of these examples, we have t as time in years. So we're going to define the first year as t equals zero. So just kind of glancing down here at the bottom here, this first year of data that we have, 1980, the population of Escondido, uh, t is going to be zero in 1980. Uh, that means that the year 2018 would be 2018 minus the starting point of 1980. That would be 38 years ago, so t is 38. So it's important to define what your starting point is. So now that we have the starting point, t equals zero, that means that this 64,355 is our a value. So that right there is a, our initial value, our, in this context, our initial population of Escondido, California. Uh, b is the base. We've seen that many times in this chapter already. And if b is greater than one, it's exponential growth, so it's going up like that. And if b is between 0 and 1, it's exponential decay. So going downhill like that. So let's check out this first question. It says, using the data in the table below and assuming the growth is exponential, when will the population of Escondido surpass a quarter million people? So before we can answer the question, we need to write our function so that it looks like that. Once we have our function written, then it's simply a matter of plugging in a quarter million somewhere into the function and solving. So we mentioned earlier that our a value is this. This is a. This is when t is 0, and this is t is 38. So we're going to write our general formula, y equals a, b to the t. And our A value is 64,355. Our base, we don't know. So most of the time on these questions, you'll have to solve for the base. And we have done examples like this in the past, so it might seem a little familiar to you. Uh, and then T is after 38 years, T is 38. After 38 years, we have... Uh, this value right here, 1, 5, 1, 9, 7, 0. So this is the equation that we solve to find B. And to solve that equation, you're going to isolate B. Here's B right here. Isolate B. So we're going to divide both sides by uh, 64,355. Divide over here, 64,355. And we get 2.3614 equals B to the 38. Uh, you definitely want to keep that whole decimal in your calculator. Uh, and then you're going to do the 38th root of both sides. So to get rid of this b to the 38, we have to not just do a square root, but we need the index to be 38. 38. Uh, so that would give us b equals whatever the 38th root is. On my calculator, I have to type 38 first. And I have a graphing calculator, so I type 38. I go to math and I find the symbol that looks like this, x root. 
and the 38 type first will fill in for that x. So the 38th root of my previous answer, that long decimal, I get uh, this number. The base equals the base equals 1.022869, etc., 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 etc. Uh, you do want to use uh, all those decimals. So it's helpful if on your calculator, I'm go like this. <coughs> oh, didn't do what I thought it would do. Uh, if you have that long decimal on your calculator, just calculator tip right now, 9926. Uh, most calculators, graphing and scientific calculators, there's a store button. It would say STO, maybe have a little arrow. Uh, on the graphing calculator, it's in the bottom left above the on button. Uh, but if you hit that, you'll see a little arrow, uh, and then you can uh, do alpha a certain letter. So you could store it as a letter. So if we store it as B, uh, then whenever we type B on our calculator, that value will appear, and it basically will save it in the calculator. Uh, and you could leave it there. It doesn't really matter what letter you choose. I just pick B because of uh, the base that it is. Uh, but all of this just so I don't have to keep typing this whole uh, long decimal. And since it's exponential growth, it's important to have that long decimal because uh, since it's growing at such a fast rate, we don't want to round too early. So now that we've found B, we can write our general formula, Y equals the A value is still the A value. That's still our initial population. Uh, B, and I will put in quotes capital B because I stored it in my calculator, raised to the T. And again, that B that I had stored in my calculator is this value that uh, keeps going. Looks like an irrational number. And now that I have that, I can answer the question, uh, when will... When is a time question, so I'm solving for t. When will the population surpass a quarter million people? So a quarter million, we'd have 250,000 is the same as a quarter million, equals 64,355 times that b that I have saved in my calculator, raised to the t. Again, when is a time question, so our variable we're solving for is t for time. Uh, and then we solve this, we're going to isolate the uh, b, so divide both sides by that 64,000, and we would get 3.8847, etc., etc., long decimal, equals our base b to the t. Uh, and then algebraically solving, like we've done in a prior lesson, we're going to uh, log both sides and bring the t out in front of the log. So let me get a little more computer screen to work with. Log 3.8847 equals log b to the t. So we get that. And the reason why we do a log of both sides is that allows us to take this exponent with the power property and bring that exponent out in front. So then we'd have... Uh, log of 3.8847 equals t log b. And that b is the b I have saved to my calculator. Uh, and now we isolate t. We want to know when the population will be a quarter million in Escondido. So we're going to divide both sides by this expression or this quantity log b. So that's going to come over here, log b equals t. So it's not here anymore. So we divided both sides by that. Uh, and that's our answer. So uh, when you're typing that in your calculator, I still have this 3.8847 in my calculator. I'm going to do log of my previous answer. Hit enter and then divide by log of b. I just have to find where I saved b, log of b. So the time 
I get is 60.014. Uh, that's in years, and we defined zero as 1980. So this would be 60 years after 1980, so uh, approximately 2040. If the uh, rate continues to grow like it is in Escondido, in about year 2040, it will have a quarter million people. So that was the first example that we have, showing you how to uh, work with that. A lot of different uh, aspects there. We started by first writing the function based on the data. And once we had the function, then we could answer the question about this quarter million. And we had to uh, log both sides when we did that. Uh, I'd like you to see if you can write the function on number two, right below here. Uh, this is the population of California. So pause this video and see if you can write the function. Find the B and then write the general function. So based on this data, I have this initial setup right here. Divide both sides by 34, got that step. Do an 18th root of both sides here, and we get the initial value of, or sorry, the base of 1.0084, which I will store in B in my calculator. Now that we have the base and the function, we can answer questions A and B. My apologies for not giving you enough space on this page. What will the population be? What will the population be? That's going to be solving for y in our equation. So our equation, our general equation is y equals the initial value is 34 still. I have B saved in my calculator, so I'll just put quotes around that. I know B. It's that 1.008 number. And T is time. So in 2020, be careful not to put 2020 in for T, because remember we defined 2000 as 0 and 2018 as 18. So really, we're just putting 20 in here. So we just have y equals 34, whatever that b is that I have saved in my calculator, raised to the 20th. Uh, those are the really nice kind. You just type 34, use b on my calculator, raised to the 20th, and uh, we get an estimate that the population will be 40.2087 million people in California by 2020. Uh, and that was A. I'm going to erase that and then answer B. Oop. Using this equation again. Oh, I don't know if this is B. B. So B says, in what year? In what year is a time question? So we're going to be solving for T, time. So we must know what Y is. They tell us Y in the question. When will it surpass 50 million? Don't put 50 comma 000 comma 000. That would be too many. Because remember, our population over here is already in millions. So we just have to put 50. So when the population's 50 million, solve this for T. Again, the base, I know, because it's in my calculator. Um, so pause this video and see if you are able to solve this. We solve one like this in number one above. Uh, but this is an important skill that you know how to solve an equation when you have an exponent t. So pause this video. So the first step, I divide both sides by 34 and got this. That's isolating the base. And then the next step, I log both sides and bring the t out in front. So there's that t out in front. And then finally, we would have uh, log, we'd have this expression divided by log of b. So when we do that, we get t equals 45.9875. Uh, that's not 45 AD or CE, that's 45 years after 2000. So that would be approximately uh, 2046 late December of 2045, uh, but roughly 2046. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that's one type of example. The only other type of example in this lesson 
uh, is about what are called half-lives. So let's look at another example. The half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of the atoms of the substance to disintegrate. All life on Earth contains the radioactive element carbon-14. You might have heard of carbon-14 dating. Not like carbon-14 going on dates, but dating how old something is with the amount of carbon-14 in the substance, which decays continuously at a fixed rate. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. That is, every 5,730 years, half of the mass of carbon-14 decays away. So to be able to write our formula, uh, on one hand, half-life questions are uh, very easy. On the other hand, uh, you have to get used to changing the exponent, which we had a task uh, earlier where we had to change the exponent. So if we uh, take this half, this is our base. And our base is 1 half. But it's not having the amount every one year. It takes this many years to have the amount. So to have one half of the amount, we would need to have this numerator, 5,730 years, divided by its half-life of 5,730 years. Divide those, you get one. So it takes that many years to have once. To have twice, one half to the two, you would need 11,460 years to have twice. So when we write our equation, our uh, y equals a b to the t equation, we're going to have y equals a, our initial substance, our initial uh, amount of carbon-14. Our base is a half, which is very convenient. Earlier in this lesson, we had to find the base and then store it in our calculator. It's a long decimal. <laughs> These are very nice because the base is a half. The time, though, the exponent, is t divided by its half-life, which is 5,730 years. So this is uh, basically the equation. Now this question in B tells us how to find the A value. We're told that there's only 3% of the substance left. So if the initial substance was A, let's write all this side of the equation. If there's 3% left, 3% of the initial value of A, we could write as 0 0.03 A. That's 3% of whatever the initial value was. So then we could simplify by dividing both sides by A. <coughs> Excuse me. So we would get this equation to solve 0 0.03 equals one half t raised to the sorry one half raised to the t divided by fifty seven thirty. And then like we were doing earlier, we could log both sides, log, bring the exponent down, log of zero point zero three equals T over 5730, that's the power property of logarithms, times log of 1 half. Uh, solving that, we could do log 0.03 on our calculator, multiply both sides by 5730, and then divide by log of a half. So uh, if you did all that correctly, we get, ran out of space, we get t equals the time it takes for, or how long it's been if it only has 3% left, is 28,987 years. And there's some decimal on that. Um, so that's how you solve one with uh, a half-life equation. Uh, part C right next to it is another example. You're just told 12% uh, instead of 3%. So the solving is going to be very similar to B here. But I wanted to look at one more example in the back of this 
so this lesson isn't too long. So let's look at the back page. Um, this question's similar to what we started the lesson with, so you could try those out on your own. But I want to look at number five, plutonium-239, which has a different half-life. So let's determine the equation for exponential decay. We would have the amount of uh, plutonium that we have equals the initial amount A. Uh, it's a half-life, so we have a half here. And then raised to the T divided by 24,000. Um, that's the best that we could do. We don't really know the initial value until we read part B. After how many years will 20 grams turn into 5 grams? 20 is what it is initially. 5 is after it's halved. So that's why. So we'd have, we need to solve 5 equals 20 is our initial. It's a half-life, so our base is a half. And T is what we're solving for. T divided by 24,000. <clears throat> Divide both sides by 20. Get a quarter. One half to the T divided by 24,000. Uh, log both sides and solve. So pause this video and see if you're able to log and solve correctly for T. So after logging both sides, bringing the exponent down out in front, isolating t, I get this kind of work right here, and I get t is 48,000 years. Now I want to do this to point out, notice you started at 20. Let me get rid of some of this work here so we can focus. Focus! We started at 20. We ended at 5, which is a quarter of 20. If it takes 24,000 years to have, then that means after 24,000 years from 20, now we're down to 10. If we have another 24,000 years to have, now we're down to 5. And that's what the very question's about. So, how many years have passed? Well, add those, and you get 48,000 years. Um, I've skipped number, what, number 4 and number 6. You can get those notes from someone else. Uh, but I hope this video is helpful uh, as you learn to solve exponential functions.